Governor Ted Strickland is with us, the former governor of the great state of Ohio, 2007 to 2011. He is the national campaign co-chair of the Obama for, for president or for re-election or whatever it's called, the Obama campaign, BarackObama.com. Governor, welcome to the program. Hey, it's great to be with you. Thank you for joining us. I'm curious what your thoughts are on what's going to happen tonight. Well, I think this is going to be a very important night in the um, evolution of this campaign. I think the president will be very strong, and uh, I think he will hold uh, Governor Romney accountable if he tries to do what he did in that first debate, and that was to reinvent himself and to basically uh, be untruthful about what his positions were and have been. Well, the Romney campaign has already you know, made that as an article of faith, that that's what they're doing. I mean, yesterday Paul Ryan shows up at a, sh- as, at a soup kitchen, after it's already closed and the dishes are already cleaned, and you know he and his wife throw on aprons and start rewashing clean dishes for the photo op, the guy who runs a soup kitchen is is hysterical. You know, I didn't even yeah, I didn't even invite them in. I'm sorry. They don't know how to fake compassion. Right. I mean, you know, that was in my state of Ohio in Youngstown, um, and 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 to go into a, a soup kitchen uh, without making prior arrangements when everyone had apparently already left and the cleanup had already been done, put on an apron and pretend to be cleaning some pots and pans in order to get a picture taken is, you know, he ought to be embarrassed. Uh, and, and you, you are, you have seen uh, President Obama in the last uh, little bit here? Is he, is he up and energetic and all that? Well, I have not seen him. I'm here in New York. Um, uh, the president, uh, uh, I, I think he's probably already arrived here, um, but, I, but I have not seen him. I've talked to some of his uh, uh, major staff people, and they say he's uh, Ready to looking go. forward to this opportunity tonight. Great. And great. Um, so, go- Governor, I, I, if I may ask a question that's related more to uh, overall political uh, strategy, not political strategy, but uh, how elections work here in the United States, um, that I think is, frankly, is concerning a lot of our callers, a lot of our viewers and listeners. Um, back in 1980, a fellow by the name of Paul Weyrich, or Weyrich, um, yeah. co-founded the American Legislative Exchange Council, ALEC, which has yeah. uh, sponsored a series of laws, these voter suppression laws around the country. Uh, he also co-founded the Heritage Foundation. And in 1980, he ran Ronald Reagan's direct mail campaign, which was a major part of his campaign. And he also worked on the Bush Sr. and the Bush Jr. campaigns. He, di- he died about two years ago. And he he- this is just a 20-second clip of Paul Weyrich speaking in 1980 to a group of high-level senior Republican activists who were also affiliated with a Christian coalition that was emerging at that point in a, in a, in a Republican church. Listen to this, please. Now, many of our Christians have what I call the goo-goo syndrome. Good government. They want everybody to vote. I don't want everybody to vote. Elections are not won by a majority of people. They never have been from the beginning of our country, and they are not now. As a matter of fact, our leverage in the elections quite candidly goes up as the voting populace goes down. I mean, the guy who founded ALEC, who founded the Heritage Foundation, one of the most powerful Republicans for for three decades in the United States, our leverage in the elections goes up as the voting populace goes down. We're hearing stories about 80,000 people knocked off the polls in Florida, 200,000 in Colorado, all over the country. This In Ohio, it's going on, in your state. Um, what, are, what are we to do about this? Well, we got a good court decision in Ohio today. The Supreme Court decided uh, to reject uh, our Secretary of State's uh, appeal Right. Uh, regarding the three days prior to November the 6th. The early voting. Yeah. And um, so thankfully we will have um, the ability for our people to vote on the Friday, Saturday, uh, uh, or uh, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday leading up to the Tuesday, November 6th election. But you're absolutely right. Um, I believe uh, the, the, the leadership of the Republican Party is really afraid of the American voter and so they're doing whatever they can to suppress the vote. And in some cases, uh, I think they are imposing restrictions that, uh, in my judgment at least, uh, are reprehensible. And uh, the, the courts should absolutely 
um, reject them. Yeah. Um, this is this is a shameful uh, part of the Republican agenda these days uh, to try to keep legitimate Americans from uh, uh, you know having access and being able to easily vote. Right. I mean that you know the whole voter ID uh, travesty in Pennsylvania. Um, the the uh, cutting back on voting hours in states, uh, it's, it's, it's akin to behaviors that I thought we had left in, into, in, into the, you know, the... So it's Jim Crow all over again. Uh, uh, yeah, G- Jim Crow, uh, uh, different tactics, different methods, but the same motivation uh, and the same goal is to try to deprive... Of citizens of the, of their ability to cast their vote for the person of their choice, that's a that's a sad thing. And uh, you know, if I were uh, a moderate uh, or even a conservative within the Republican Party, I I, I would really be ashamed of what uh, what my party was doing. And and I yeah. I suspect there are you know good moderates and conservatives out there within the Republican Party who feel as if their party has been, quite frankly, taken over. Yeah. By and, and, well, and a few of them, a few of them have spoken up. I, I, I'm with you. And, and you said the magic word, courts. The next president is going to appoint several Supreme Court justices in all probability. This is a big deal. Governor Strickland, thanks so much for being with us. But thank you for having me. Thank you. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 866-987-THOM. We will be back with more of Your Thoughts, My Thoughts, the news of the day as we head up to this debate tonight here on the Tom Harbin Program.